Acho que é umas feriazinhas, meu. Já tem 50 vezes 4. Não, o dia em casa é isso. Hoje? Pois é, isso que eu estava a te dizer. Se hoje, se calhar, ele vai me pagar só metade. Não, meu, mas claro que sim. Eu não tenho nada a ver. Pois, claro. Então, eu, não, eu queria que eu não cobrasse este dia. Ah. Pá, aquilo é só metade. É só uma parte da manhã e tal. E pá, e pá, depois daqui o que é. É logo que o gajo, o gajo para pagar menos faz tudo. Por isso que o gajo. Olha, tu amanhã vais. Vais à hora do almoço, não ficas cá. Estou mesmo a ver. Vou já falar com ele. Depois já me avisam estas merdas no fim. Ah, Estava aqui a fazer com muitos pedidos, pelo menos. Ah, assim ele. Ele está a marcar, porque eu tenho que dizer que é câmera um pouquinho. Para ter. Sim, com todos. Mas é mesmo assim, então o gajo chamou mal. Acho que com todos, eu também. Então, cobrei-lhe mais. Ah, são queridos há 120, olha, foi mais 5 euros em cada dia para fazer os nossos concursos. Eles vão, ah, está bem. Não, 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 É pá, é. É, yeah, mas o. o esse o Galeiros. Pá, o ah, miúdo, eu fui lá uma vez isto. Pá, o miúdo. É pá, eu, eu não quero ir fazer o trabalho. Pá, e o trabalho é tranquilo, era a subida à glória. É. Subida à glória, aquilo que foi tipo à noite só. Estás a ver? Mas tipo, uma cena boa da tranquila, só ir os gás a subir. Mas que é à noite? À noite. Bicicleta? É. Yeah. Uh, Uma prova à noite? O gajo vai à rasca. É para preciso, por favor. Consigo. É, pá, na altura estava com, com a minha miúda e com, uh, sozinho em casa com, com a minha filha. E pá, eu disse, pá, eu vou, vou agora vou sair, vou fazer um trabalho. Nós até éramos para sair, estás a perceber? Pá, vou. Estás a ver? Fui lá, meu, depois, quando o gajo, olha, faz-me aí, faça uma receita. Pá, e eu disse, olha, é X. Pá, cobrei, já não me lembro, se foi 150 ou 200 euros, foi esse trabalho. E aquilo foi, tipo, 4 horas de trabalho. E eu, ei, isso é muito caro. Não sei o que, então, meu, estavas, pá, foi a última. Quanto é que os gajos, é, pá, é, pá. Não, o gajo já ia me pagar 75 sem câmara, meu. Ok. Pois, mas, se ele, se ele, ele paga, tipo, Casamentos é muito lhe diga, não é? É giro e não é giro. É um dia intenso, muito intenso. Todas as pessoas são muito chatas. Mas também depende do casamento. Se vais filmar um casamento de um, um VIP qualquer, cá aí coisas que falam de casamentos VIP. Ninguém se mete contigo. Não se mete. Não, as pessoas no geral, meu, para filmar e para não sei o quê, para não. Não, não, não. 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 Não,
Solzinho aí de frente vai ser umas boas imagens.
Danmark ligger ude og varmer op nu, og det bliver helt fenomenalt.
Good morning everybody watching us on the screen here in the beautiful city of Coimbra. We are on the fourth game day of this European Championship 2019 on pitch number three with game 141. Next up Spain against Denmark in the man class. Senior man class, let me correct that. On the left hand side it will be Spain all covered in white, red and yellow with number one Victor Gonzalez, with number two Ankel Gordo, with number four Ivan Hoyo, with number five Sergio Valarubia, with number six Alvaro Hiano, with number seven Alejandro Gordo, with number eight Adrian Hamida with number 9 Alejandro Casala with number 10 Alejandro Valls and on the right hand side covered in on the left hand side now uh, all covered in white and red the Danish team with number 1 Rune Sörensen with number 2 Emil Jensen with number 3 Emil Holm with number four, Martin Aibai. With number five, Christopher Zwigge. With number six, Christian Kleist. With the number seven, Jakob Steglich Andersen. With number eight, Matthias Jensen. With number nine, Andreas Iversen. And finally, last but not least, with the number ten, Mikkel Fredholm. Team's captains for the Danish team, Matthias Jensen. And uh, on the Spanish side it is Angel Gordo with the number two. Game is just about to start within the next few moments. Sun is already coming up. What a beautiful day it is in the city of Coimbra. Coaches making the last adjustments, telling their players what the aim is, making one or two short sentences to bring back the main aim in their mind. Players are lining up, getting ready for the sprint start. Starting five is coming on the pitch. Let's see. Who will win this first possession of this senior men's game between Denmark and Spain? As I said, on the left-hand side, the Danish team. On the right, you can see the Spanish guys. It will be, I think, number seven going for the sprint start. Referee has blown the whistle. Andreas Iverson versus Alejandro Gordo. And it is the first possession of this game will go to the Danish side. Let's see what they can bring up. Now working inside the Spanish defense, number one, Sörensen for the Danish team. Spain is covering with a 4-0 kind of defensive style. Matthias. Iverson on the left hand side with number nine Jensen. Back out to Iverson. I buy 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Now the Danish team has really to hurry up to put a shot up. And it w goes in. What a lucky deflection it was. Rune Sörensen. Number one for the Danish team opens up scoring in this early game at 8.30. So now the Danish team is in the lead over Spain, 1-0, just within the first half. And it was even the first minute the Danish team has scored. So now let's see what Spain can do with their first possession. Can they tie it up? Can they score with their first possession as well? 40 seconds on the shot clock. Ball brought, brought, brought back out. They're attacking in a wave system. Now second wave is running. Gordo. Gonzalez. Amida. Gordo. 
Gonzalez, but though the bad pass it was, deflected with the puddle. Gonzalez tried to get his paddle on it. And now the counter-attack is running. Let's see if the Danish team can put the lead up even further. They're taking their time, building it slowly up. Iversen. Sörensen in the middle. Iversen shoots and hits. Now it's 2-0 for Denmark over Spain in this early game. Uh, maybe the Spain team is still asleep. Those were two very quick goals from the Danish team. Bit lazy defending there. Timeout has been given by the German referee. Talking to his staff there. They are talking with each other. Let's see what the decision will be. Maybe a substitution mistake? I don't know. We will see within a few seconds. In the picture you can see the number eight, uh, Hermida, Adrian Hermida, played his first season in the German Bundesliga for Wanderfalke Essen. Did a very good job there, improved with every game. Gordo with the ball, trying to get it in. His teammate, number two, Gordo, tries to get it in. Oh, and now uh, Victor Gonzalez, number one for Spain, has scored their first goal within the first half. Now score is even closer. One for Spain and two remaining for the Danish side. Let's see if the Danish team can put another goal on the scoreboard to be in front with two goals again. Aye, bye. Iverson, sorry, it was Jensen on the left-hand side. Ball lost, bad pass, and now the, the Spanish counter-attack is running. Gordon is through. Gonzalez looking for his, Gordo is looking for his teammate. Vals, right-hand side, Gonzalez. Gordo, advantage has been given. Let's see if the Spanish team can tie it up. They looked a bit hectic on the, that attempt. Now they, are ca they have calmed down, building up their attack. 45 seconds on the shot clock. Gonzalez on the right-hand side. Top of the key. Tom Chen, uh, Waltz. Gordo. Gordo and some one of the Spanish team has touched the goalkeeper. Now it will be the Danish ball. Maybe a counter attack. No. Steglich Andersen breaks up the attempt of the counter attack. I buy with the ball here with number four playing in the German Bundesliga for VK Berlin. He just survived the playdowns as the first seeded. So VK Berlin will remain in the German Bundesliga and play there next year as well. I buy. Ah, what a obvious pass it was, but in lucky with the deflection, passes it to the right-hand side. And now Denmark puts another goal on the scoreboard with number three, Emil Holm. Make sure that they stay up in front with two goals. Emil Holm. One of the older guys in this Danish team. He has just turned 30 years this year of 2019. Now it will be the Danish team's ball again. 
not the possession for them. They will try to build up slowly, take only good shots, make sure that the backfield is covered to so don't get run get run over by easy counter attacks. I buy. Iverson. Jensen. Jensen. Bye bye. Jensen. Iverson. Advantage has been given. Illegal holding. New 60 seconds to build up a shot. Jensen. Iverson now switched to the right hand side. Maybe it was a bit too obvious that he was going for the left side and Spain defense did a good job attacking, uh, defending, sorry. Did a good job defending him. Hamida looking for the long shot. Time out has been given. I think it will be a green card on the Danish side. Let's see. No, it won't be. So now the ball is free again. Hamida with the ball. On the right hand side, Gordo for his team. Number 10 on top of the key. Gordo. Emil Jensen. Oh, there was a green card. I have not seen it. I'm sorry. Emil Jensen takes the green card. Number two for the Danish team. First green card of this game. Gordo in the middle. And he puts it in. What a great shot it was by Gordo. Now a score is put closer. Gordo puts the Spanish team within reach. So now two for Spain and three goals for Denmark. Denmark only up by one. Let's see if they can make it two again within this 60 seconds of shot clock. Illegal holding. They attack the player before the six meter line and that's not allowed. Iverson, Friedholm to um, on the right hand side, Jensen in the middle, fast shot, but he could not make it, oh and what a bad pass it was, and uh, even a worse attempt to take it with his pedal, and now Spain is back in possession, Ivan Hoyer with the ball, that was not a good attempt to take the ball with his paddle. Number 10 made a crazy mistake, Nikos Freton there. But that doesn't matter as long as the Danish team won't receive a goal. Bordo, Hermida. Wals. Oyo takes it inside, let's see. Shot, but a good save by Sörensen. Sörensen brings the ball up the field. One and a half minute remaining in this first half of playtime action. Maybe Spain, the Spanish team is a bit disappointed. They uh, were looking for better chances. Within the last four international competitions, they have been in uh, two finals and two times they have been playing for place three. And they always took place three in uh, 2017 in Saint-Mer. In, uh, in French, uh, they finished even first so I assume they might be a bit disappointed and not that motivated but let's see what they can do to this Danish team the biggest achievement for the Danish team was to uh, play six they took play six uh, two times uh, within the last seven years First in 2012 and then again in 2017. So you can see what is going on there. 
Denmark uh, is building up a good team and um, they are very becoming a force in the Cano Polo sport. High by. Shoots. Deflected hit the top bar and that will be it for the first half of game time action. Halftime break gives me a chance to thank our sponsors. Coimbra City Council, the University of Coimbra, Club Fluvial de Coimbra, the local Cana Club, Hugo Santa Casa, Upin Sports, the supplier of the goals for this competition, and uh, the Portuguese Institute for Sports and Youth. The competition is organized by the Portuguese Cano Federation and uh, the European Cano Association. Those are all the main guys and main people for this competition, those, those European Championships of 2017. Coaches making their adjustments, try to get their team in the right direction for the second half. You can see the stat sheet, total shots, so it's kind of even on both sides. Six for the Danish team and only four for the Spain team. A little disadvantage there. Spain was not that good in the first half with building up shots. So teams are lining up, second half is just about to start in this senior men class team, Spain against Denmark. In the first half, the Danish team took the lead. They're up by one, three to two is the score. On the left hand side, you can see the Spain team covered in red, yellow, black and white. And on the right hand side, you can see the Danish team lining up all in wearing white and red. I think uh, Gordo will take the another sprint start number seven. Arguably one of the fastest guys of this competition. He's going up against Iverson with number nine. Let's see who can win the first possession for their team in this first half. Red signal on the Spanish team. Green lights on both sides. Oh! And I think that was a false start by Iversen. And yes, it was. Refs shown the sign. Went much too early there, I think. Gordo with the ball. Going in strong. Number nine. Alejandro Carzal. Green card has been given to whom I have not seen it yet. It was right, it was right, you told me right. Yeah, it 
was to Andreas Iversen. He was uh, not satisfied with the rest decision on this charging, charging foul. And uh, he complained about it a bit too much. So now two green cards on the Danish side. One was for uh, Emil Jensen and uh, the other one was for Matthias Kenha uh, sorry, for Andreas Iversen. Now trying to force it into Danish defense, but another bad pass made. Ah, Sørensen complains a bit there because the, the paddle was maybe a bit too close to his hands. Jensen, team's captain with number eight, this big strong guy by the name of Matthias Jensen played his second season for a German Bundesliga team. Uh, he's stuck with uh, ACC Hamburg for his second year. Iversen oh, and the paddle foul has been called. Timeout has been given. Let's see what it will be. It will be a penalty. Won't. Yes. It will be a penalty and it will be resulting in a yellow card. I think uh, Victor Gonzalez. Victor Gonzalez uh, with the foul on that one. Oh, you can see. Okay, what is going on now? Was there a power play option on that one? No, Victor Gonzalez uh, just went out of the zone because uh, the penalty. Andreas Iverson uh, puts another goal on the scoreboard. Now 4-2-2. Denmark's now going with a full court man-to-man -man press. Uh, Alejandro Gordo, Gordo was the guy to take the yellow card for the penalty. Every foul that results in a penalty will be rewarded with a yellow card. I think that's double punishment, but uh, let's talk about the rules another time. Amida brings it up the field. Ah, good effort there. Amida. Ah, it's Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Valls up front. Amida with the ball, looking for his teammate. Valls defended by Ibai. Amida. Iversen. Oh, what a lazy pass by Hamida. Iversen had no hard time deflecting that one, and now it's Danish possession again. That was what they were hoping for with the man-to-man -man press. They want to get up even further in front, put another goal on the stat sheet. Sörensen. Iversen. Fred Holm. Shot, and what a stunning shot it was. Matthias Jensen tried his luck there, and it hit the top bar. Now the Spanish team has to build up. <laughs> now the penalty time has run out. Um, number seven, Alejandro Gordo, joins the game again. One of the most important players on this Spanish side. Gordo with the ball, as I said. Gordo looking for his teammate, number seven. <laughs> Gonzalez into the middle, number nine, Casal. Gordo. Try to get it inside there. Illegal holding has been called. What a promising free throw position it will be. Gonzalez. And Gonzalez puts it in. Very well placed shot there by Victor Alejandro. 
I'm sorry, by Victor Gonzalez. He has turned 29 this year. And now substitution has been made. Ankel Gordo, number two, the captain of the Spanish team, joins the field back again. Sörensen. Jensen. Fred Holm. Really taking the time they're building up, but they have to hurry now. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Jensen going up. Fred Holm on the left hand side, and what a stunning shot it was by Emil Holm. Great shot there. Puts Denmark for first. So now they're up by two again, five to three. Denmark versus Spain. Gordo on the left hand side. Gonzalez. Sorry, uh, it was Hoyo. Gordo, Hoyo. Number two, Angel Ho Ho Gordo on the left hand side. Paddle foul has been called. Maybe they will take the free throw now. Looking for a good shot position underneath the goal. And they put it in. As I said, Ivan Hoyo, the youngest guy of this team, scores. He was only born in 1996. So now Spain is within, within reach to tie the game. 5-2-4, Denmark still in the lead. Stieglich Andersen working inside the Spanish defense. Jensen, Fred Holm on the right hand side, Emil Holm. Fred Holm. But they played out safe. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Hi, boy. Ken Hark. Ken Hark. Bad pass made by Ken Hark. Got the recovers possession for the Spain team. Hermida. Fast break opportunity. Let's see what Gordo can do. And he puts it in. Oh, and now the game is. I don't know what the call is. Will it remain as a goal? Yes, it will. The Danish team was looking for an illegal hand tackle there. Alejandro Gordo puts Spain back. Now scores all tied up, five to five. Three and a half minutes left to play in this second half. Jensen, Fred Holm, Steglich Andersen working inside the Spanish defense. Now Ken, ha now Jensen joins him. Oh, Jensen working very hard on his defender there. Both foul has been called. Timeout has been given. Fred Holm, game's running again. Emil Jensen. Yeah, Holm. Red Holm. Holm. Illegal holding inside the Spanish defense. Oh, and I think Angel Gordo, the team's captain with number two, is not satisfied with that decision. Holm, Sergio Villarubia will receive a green card for that illegal holding. Steglich Andersen and Jensen still working inside Holm. Fred Holm, Iverson on the left hand side, his favorite shot position going inside the Spanish defense. 
Deglich Anderson puts up a shot, but deflected by a Spanish paddle. And now the counter attack is running. Gordo with the ball on the left hand side. Hamida goes for the long shot, and he puts it in. What a great shot it was by Adrian Hamida. Now Spain is back in the lead, six to five. What a nice game we are seeing. It is really a promotion for Canopolo Sports. 11 goals have been scored within only 18 minutes. It's like almost every minute we see a goal here. Maybe that depends on some lazy defensive play, but I don't mind. It's a very attractive game when you see all those goals. Schürensen. Iverson, Jensen on the right hand side looking to tie up the game. Now Spain with their first lead in this game. Hi bye. Listen. Hi bye. Jensen with his left hand. Sörensen. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Iverson. Tries a shot and deflected by a Spanish paddle. A desperate there, the shot attempt by Iverson. The shot clock was running out. Jensen. <laughs> Ibe forces it inside, what a great pass to Emil Holm, but he could not finish it. And now the Danish team is going with a full court, man-to-man -man press. Only 20 seconds remaining on the game clock. Hermida, if they don't lose the ball stupidly. Spain will stay up in front and uh, take this victory. And they will, as Ivan Hoyo. The youngest guy on this team only has tw turned 22 this year. Puts the game within out of reach for the Danish team. I'm quite sure that this Spanish team will take this victory over Spain. And they will. Emil Holm puts in another goal, but I think it was out of game time. I don't think it will count. Even if it counts, Spain stays in the lead. And the goal is denied by the referee. Game has ended. Spain won over the Danish team. Danish team a bit unlucky and uh, maybe undisciplined because they were in the lead with two goals for a long time in this game. So, but that doesn't matter now anyways. Players are shaking hands with each other, everybody's friendly. So this game ends. Next up on pitch three, we have some games coming up. But I don't know yet what there will be to come. But I think there will be a break for quite some time. Thank you for tuning in. Have a nice day. You can switch to pitch one or two if you want to see some other kind of polo play action of this European Championship of 2019. You can see the stats there. Spain with 10 shots, Denmark with 13, a bit of an advantage there. You can see the precision on the Spain team was uh, higher because they had more shots on goal. So that will be it. That sums it up for this game. Thanks for tuning in. Have a nice day and uh, hope to have you guys all with me for the final games of this European Championship 2019.
okay? Okay? You talk to me in my language, and after that, you ask me for to speak in another, another language. Okay? Your behavior uh, for, for me, I think, is disgusting. Okay? Disgusting. disgusting. You are not part of the game. Sporting. Yeah. So I saw you, uh, you talk with Alex about this, well, but when you come in to shoot, it's always yeah. the blocker who has to be responsible for like the defender. Yeah, the defender has the responsibility to avoid the foul. Okay. And no matter if he's still like this or anything. For example, he does not press down, yep. he does not press down, but he does not move the wind. Okay, 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 perfect. Because that's like always when, when I'm attacking and like drifting in beside them yeah. and they lay like this, yes. and I'm like... Because that, there's a rule to protect the shooter. Yeah. Nice. Because often I just hear Riffs say like, oh, but he was still, or it was just his yeah, hand, or whatever. He, he did not move, yeah. that was the ref, but he did not move. Yeah. Nice. Because there's always a lot of doubt in like, when it's not yeah. ideas, but yeah. that stuff.
para a minha para se garantir que é mal lindo. Se a bola para jogar à bola, o que é que seu boa? Essa mulher, essa é de homem. É de homem? Essa é de homem, essa mulher, essa é maior do que é. Mas isto mesmo para agarrar, olha lá. Não dá para agarrar, não. É pedido, não. Quase tem uma pessoa, e essa é de mulher. Mulher e espírito. Mas isto pega-me. Tens de ter uma mão grande? Não, não. Se tiveres. Eles põem aí? Eles têm. Não, não. Não podem meter. Não podem pôr. Com água agarras melhor. Com água agarras melhor. Qual é o preço de uma bolinha desta? 30 e tal. 30 e tal. Sim, as bolas de hoje em dia. Made in China, não? É. Made in China. É tudo. Sim, é tudo. Que caralho. Mas é o manager do. O que é que é? Não. 
Já fui. Não, eu já fui. Já fui selecionador. Sou jogador. Ei lá, com uma mão. Olha, tentei não bater as bolas na... no chão. Desculpa. Não, por Porque começam-se a estragar. Sim. Hum... Só ver essa. Mas... Ah, esta é mais pequenina. É, é. Porquê que, é que não, não atiram? Depois já atirarem a sua bola. Não há mais precisão. Também podem fazer assim. Podem fazer de todas as maneiras. Mas há mais precisão e mais força com duas mãos. Não, 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 não. Só com uma. Uma alavanca cá atrás. Claro. Não, assim. Claro. Ah, então, mas, não. Então, não. Então, se for assim. Não, não, não dá. Não. Não. Assim. Assim, assim é mais estável. Assim, há um japonês que marca assim. Eu acho que vai subir. Porque é que eles não têm o canal de baixo. Mas qual é a melhor equipa disto? A uh, Alemanha, em princípio, deve ganhar tudo este ano. Eles ganharam ontem tudo. Ganharam e devem ganhar as mulheres e os homens. Mas a nível mundial? Uh, a Espanha era boa, só que ficou fora dos oito. Costuma estar a disputar sempre as medalhas. Era a, a, a última campeã europeia foi a Espanha. Mas uh, este, agora neste campeonato ficou fora dos oito primeiros. Estava a lutar pelo nono décimo lugar. Uh, a Espanha é boa, França, Itália, Alemanha, os ingleses este ano estão novamente bons porque trocaram a equipa toda. E a Dinamarca também costuma estar nos oito primeiros, também ficou fora dos outros. O Japão é bom? O Japão é mais ou menos. Não está é, não, não nos oito primeiros. As equipas. As únicas que costumam, fora da Europa, que estão nos oito primeiros, podem estar nos oito primeiros a Austrália, Nova Zelândia às vezes, coisas assim. E Portugal? Portugal já ficou nos oito primeiros não. comigo. É, o, último europeu, o último europeu ficou no, em oitavo, ficou nos oito primeiros. É, e há 12 anos atrás, no Mundial, em Amsterdão, também comigo, eu fico no, em oitavo. E os jogadores russos? Eu vi aqui russos, como é que eles treinam lá? Eles não entram na água? Piscina. Não, eles têm a piscina. Não, mas, uh, o russo, os russos também é uma seleção relativamente nova, estão a formar uma nova equipa e estão a começar a, a fazer frente aí a muitas equipas. A Rússia equipas. em termos de é muito boa, não? É. Estão a começar a aparecer. Porque Portugal não tem, não é muito forte ao desporto, porque não tem, na escola também não se fala, na escola falamos alguma vez de canelagem. Foi o Bruno Silva, que é o selecionador de... Se não tivesse uma zona de canelagem, muita gente não sabe que existe. Canelagem? Não estou a falar de que muita gente não sabe que existe. Era um grande jogador, era o meu jogador da seleção. Ele e outro... Não há uma cultura desportiva. Eu gosto de futebol aquático, agora isso é muito estranho. Eles eram grandes jogadores. Não, mas essa está engraçada. O Portugal sempre teve bons jogadores e. Tem a ver muito com o trabalho que se faz no. Não outro dia estávamos aqui a filmar a seleção portuguesa. Estava a madurar algo. Mas agora nós temos um jogo. O primeiro jogo da seleção portuguesa, eu vi. E vai ser que se faça com as minhas, as outras equipas, tudo micras. Não, então porquê que elas acordaram no jogo? Todo o material individual. Agora os cabeças. Mas eles já jogaram mal, não é? Mas isso as pessoas já estavam. Neste momento, a seleção portuguesa só os cenas é que tinham litras. De Portugal, só os cenas é que tinham litras. Mostra logo aí, mostra. É uma mentalidade, não é? Marcou 2-1. A Dinamarca não está a ser mais forte. O que é a qual já existe há muitos anos a nível praticado em. Portanto, nós já realizámos em 80 e tal, em 92, realizámos o Mundial em Aveiro, mas nessa altura ainda só era preciso um campo, ou seja, foi nas piscinas. Agora, há, há 10 anos para cá é que já é exigido 4 campos. Mas é que há grandes infraestruturas, principalmente os clubes, têm aqui boas instalações. Sim, sim, sim. Ele também. A nível de canoagem. Sim, tem. Moro, lá o... Só que o problema tem a ver com. Tem o central de rendimento, tem grandes condições. Tem as Mediana, tem as Tem, tem. Só que depois vai com, a, com o trabalho de cada equipa no seu clube, os atletas a treinar, há trabalho que é feito em condições e há outro que não é. 
Ainda se tem cá um salto qualitativo uh, que eu tentei injetar, mas um ou outro Coimbra injetou um bocadinho, mas precisava um bocadinho mais. Não são, há seis anos campeões nacionais, não é? Mas precisava um bocadinho mais. Eu, como estou em Lisboa, pronto. Eu sou de Coimbra, mas já estou em Lisboa há 20 anos. Mas, ah, é isso. mas todos os clubes precisavam de melhorar a, para que depois eh, deviam treinar para ganhar lá fora, não para ganhar cá dentro. Porque uma coisa é treinar só para ganhar aqui, ou seja, basta isto, outra coisa é treinar para jogar, porque se eu ganhar fora, ganho dentro, é mudar o chip, a mentalidade. E vem os jogos antes das competições, das competições? Sim, vão lá fora, torneios internacionais, nós vamos menos, às vezes vão como clubes, também vão como seleção, mas vamos menos do que as equipas. As equipas estão sempre em torneios internacionais, porque nós estamos na periferia de, da Europa, não é? Eles estão ali no centro da Europa, Alemanha, é Bélgica. Né? Não, há sempre torneios internacionais. Se não, se não estão em torneios internacionais, estão a participar uh, nos campeonatos, ou seja, jogadores alemães a participar em equipas belgas, francesas, francesas, ou seja, eles estão Sim, todos, é, ou seja, é, eu este fim de semana tenho um campeonato na Bélgica, pertenço a uma equipa, vou eu, o próximo fim de semana estou na Alemanha, tenho, estou a jogar também numa equipa na Alemanha. Há treinos de jogo? Há treinos de jogo? Há muitos jogadores que pagam, recebem alguma coisa. Alemanha... Uh... Uh, neste momento não, mas já, já houve muitos convites uh, para vários jogadores. Há uns a jogar em Espanha, mas pronto. Uh, aí um já foi convidado para a Itália. Pronto, há vários aí. Só que depois depende da disponibilidade das pessoas. O problema é que depois alguns destes jogadores, enquanto não casam, torna-se fácil. A partir do momento em que casam e começam a ter filhos, torna-se mais complicado. Sim, Há muitos desses jogadores que estão a ir de seleções de Espanha, Alemanha, que andam, muitos deles andam sempre aí. É? Como é um desporto amador, não é? Sim, não, não. Claramente amador. Isso é a mesma coisa que na altura quando a nossa equipa francesa também foi ao Mundial, foi quando houve mais, mais malta a meter-se no rei e. Sim, certo. quando tiveram os sucessos, Seven e essas coisas todas, quando houve aquele sucesso é que houve ali logo um boom. E há sempre aqui a canoagem que também cumprimenta. E... Sim, sim. Houve uma, uma grande. Pronto. Há aí grandes clubes de canoagem que estão em Ponte Lima, pronto, há muitos Sim. clubes aí que costuma, Prado, estão aí na elite. O não é? Saavedra Guedes já teve um atleta já, do top, não já foi? Teve, já teve, é já. é da minha geração, como é que ela se chamava? Lembra-se? Ah, ela não era comigo na escola, tipo, ah, não era da minha geração nem teve, nada. Ah, tipo, da borda ou... Ela chegou a ser campeã nacional, se não, se não me engano. Acho que ela acabou. Não, mas já teve. Já manda tentar não, não o teve, não teve alguns, não teve só esse, mas a nível. Teve ali atletas que chegavam terceiro, segundo e houve um que foi campeão nacional. E, e também já teve a nível de maratonas e tudo, também já teve. Os clubes, pronto. Isto, os maiores clubes é, é Norte, é? Costuma, Ponte Lima, Prado, pronto, são ali a, os clubes ali de referência. 
que não ganha? Claro. Sim, é, pois há, há uma estrutura por trás que permite que eles... Ou seja, Sim, a estrutura é do clube permite... Isso é a mesma coisa que agora fomos campeões do mundo de judo. Sim. Eu nunca tinha visto aquele atleta na minha vida. É. Não acompanho não é também. Sporting? Não é ah, ah, sim. Sim, há muito... És do Sporting? Mas não tem um jogo? Não, eu não vou porque não, não vi. Foi. 3-2 não foi, perdeu. 3 penaltis, 3 do Coates. E um deles chama-se de Sporting. Mas um deles não é penalti, de certeza. O segundo não é penalti. E não sei como é que o gajo marcou o penalti. E os gajos não têm as imagens. E o árbitro, exato, mas ele... Houve ali grande turbulhinho e ele não quis ver o vídeo ao árbitro e ele assumiu que era penalti. Acho que se foi um penalti e também ele não foi o vídeo árbitro. Quem? Quem? Mas o mais estranho é, foi o Coates, né? Três penaltis no mesmo jogador. O que não... Foi para a rua no último. Foi para a rua no último. Olha, Amarelo, toma, vermelho, tchau. 3-2 em casa. Mas também joguei mal, porque eu ouvi falar não vale Jogou. a pena estar Jogou a deitar para o Coares porque. Está muito mal aqui. Não está muito mal. Estava a falar agora com os colegas. Tipo... Eles estão a ver se mandam o treinador em casa. Ah, não é o treinador, nem é a culpa do treinador. Isto é sempre dos jogadores. Não, os jogadores, é sempre... não... os jogadores quando não vão na. Estão desmotivados. Os jogadores quando não vão coisa. com o treinador por alguma razão que... começam logo a mas fazer é, a coisa. É balneário. Olha, 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 tipo olha que a campanha do ano, ano passado do Ajax deve-se um bocadinho ao, ao treinador. Está bem, mas é, é uma aposta em jovem. Estão a falar que ele é um pessoal jovem. É uma aposta, nem né? no Plata, que é o melhor extremo que temos. Já viste o Plata jogar uh, 90 mais 3? Para isso não põe. Aí não põe. Bem, muito bom. Ah, bom. Bom, Vejo que é o único atleta que Não, mas que é que ele fica mal, meu. Eu por acaso não vi a segunda parte. A primeira parte não vi. Mas a segunda parte vi um cafezinho ali. Foi. Horrível, meu. Mas o penalti tipo, não é penalti. Não é o é eles nem estão a vender os jogadores. Eles estão a rescindir contratos. Tens uma ajuda para a gente. E o Bruno Fernandes vai-se embora, vai ver. Tem pescoço. Está uh, bem, meu. Eu gosto de pesquinhos, de manhãzinha. Não, é, não gosto de quando estou ali em cima. Ah, ali em cima faz a coisa. Mas eu estou muito mal. Esta, não tenho mínima esperança, nem fiz em box. Não? Ah, eu já não faço há anos. Esta é o ano que não estou a fazer. Eu ia então, com o meu pai antes. Então, ainda fiquei naquela. Quando foi o jogo cobrado, ainda pensei, ainda vou fazer. Porque estou a ver o jogo em casa, mas peço.
Toca aqui em cima. Tenta pegar numa assim. Não consegue. Deixa eu ver molhada. Mas sou molhada, é molhada, tem mais aderência. Acha? Tem. Tem só seca, tu vês que escorrega bem. Só não pode bater no chão. Pô, onde é que tu Custa. Tem que segurar isto. E já percebi porque é que elas. É? Pesado! É. Já percebi porque é que elas enfiam a canoa de baixo. A canoa? Então. É, tipo, tu vês que elas estão a atacar e chega para o remate e enfiam a canoa deles. Porque se tiverem a canoa assim, eles conseguem estar com mais impulso. Ah. Se tiver presa, a canoa vai para trás. Mas a mamãe não fez duas mãos, não podem? Podem, já vi igual. Bom, fiz tu? Sim, às vezes quando eles vão sozinhos, chegam sozinhos aqui, eles colocam coisa e mesmo sempre as duas. É pá, é que mais que ficam assim do que assim. É pá, é que já as pessoas que vão estar difícil, quanto mais tem que agarrar uma bagaia. O que eu estava a dizer, porque é que elas não fazem os passos longos assim? E o homem está a dizer que é mais fácil tu vires atrás e fazeres assim, do que assim. Ah, mas já não tem as mãos mais pequenas que eu. Mas que é com a seta? É pá. Só é só por dentro. Não 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 é só por dentro.
Clark. Contest number one is going to be Austria against Russia. Just number three, 10 10. 20 minutes from now, Sweden against Spain. Denmark and Portugal on pitch number four. Right after that, it's going to be the first couple of semi-finals of the day's fourth day of event of this European Championship. It is Great Britain against Poland on pitch number one. On pitch number two, it's Germany, Italy. The semi-finals for the men's at 10.50 today, this morning. Set by for Austria on Russia, right here on uh, the main pitch of the European Renew Polo Championship.
start of Austria against Russia. Right here on the pitch, number one. It's a 10 10. On the pitch, number three. Oh, it's expected to be seated. On the pitch, number four. It is a 10 5 4 2.
Good morning and welcome back to the live stream for pitch three of the ECA Canoe Polo European Championships 2019. Next on this pitch in the senior men's category, we have reigning European champions Spain playing against Sweden. Surely the shock of the tournaments to find the European champions currently playing for ninth to twelfth place. They are deeply unhappy with how this tournament has gone and who can blame them. Sweden, of course, looking to improve on their previous European results of 12th place. At the very least, they cannot finish lower than 12th in this fixture. Referee Mark Thomas calls lineup to both teams. Referee Mark Thomas, one of the most prolific flat water swimmers in canoe polo. Earning the nickname Bubbles. They are off. The fast sprint very clearly goes to Spain's Alejandro Gordo. And Spain are on the attack. They waste no time in putting Casal into the zone. Spain now looking to run a star from left round to right. Ball finds its way round to Gordo. It is blocked by Swedish keeper Jesper Lindberg. Casal still sitting in the Swedish zone, looking to make some space for his teammates. 
Corner goes short. Gonzalez. All on his own and taking the ball right into the zone. Swedish pin on the right. I don't know where he went. Gonzalez running straight into the zone. Once again, a short corner for Spain. Togodo. To Amida. And Gonzalez to take the shot. Bottom bar. It is called as a corner for Spain. Sweden looking to tighten up their zone if they're going to stop letting the Spanish runners in. And El Gordo takes it short. Start from right to left. Round to Gonzalez. Shot is blocked once again. Fantastic stop there from Yester Limberi. And Gonzalez taking it short once again. And a fumble from Yermida takes all of the momentum out of the Spanish attack. A vicious bin. Fails one hand roll, makes it up on the second. And Spain looking to reset now. Gonzalez finding himself in the corner with not many options, passes the ball back out to teammates. And Casal still working extremely hard in the zone. Off the bottom bar again. Opportunity for Gonzalez now. Does not manage it. Sweden on the break. But the Spanish known for their speed are simply too quick. Zetadal bringing the ball up for Sweden. Spain settling into their defense. A three and one. Sweden on the attack. Ball goes into the zone, does not quite find the hands of Zotodal. The shot there for Sweden is deflected. It goes off for a Swedish corner. It will be Lindberg to take. Go short. Lindberg takes it in. Goes off for a corner. Spain saying no, we didn't touch it. The referee disagrees. Once again, a Swedish corner taken by Lindberg. Meanwhile, Edberg working hard in the zone. Ball goes over to Zetadal. Opportunity now for Lindberg. Pushing out at this point. Lovely corner move there, hustling the taker and the nearest pass, forcing a long pass for Sweden. Lindberg on the attack, far right. Puts the ball in to teammate Zotadal. Round to Lindberg. So Tadal takes it in. Over to Malmbury. Malmbury again. Plays the ball back out. A reasonable decision considering the distance between him and the goal and the number of Spanish boats in between him and the goal. So Tadal now with the opportunity. Takes a shot, top bar. It bounces off for a Spanish sideline. Spain steaming up the pitch. Infamous speed and Gonzalez now bring the ball right up. Opportunity now for Gonzalez puts it across. 
took us out. Sweden have regained possession. Sweden are now on the break. I don't think they're going to have the same speed as the Spanish. Spain doing a fantastic job of killing that ball. Sprinting with infamous speed back into their own half. Shutting down the Swedish break. Ball goes in. It is regained by Italy. And once again, the Italians are the Spanish are on the break. I do apologize. Opportunity now. Top bar for Gordo. Sweden being put through their paces by Team Spain. Ball goes across. Almost the bottom corner there. Spanish keeper Almeida gets paddles to it. Puts it over to his teammates. And no break here for Spain. Sweden doing an excellent job of getting a keeper back and shutting down the two options running up the pitch. It is Casal. It is Almeida now. Puts the ball across to Valls. Over to Gordo. Who plays the ball back out. Sweden having to work incredibly hard to keep out the likes of Alejandro Casal, who is putting huge dents in the Swedish defense. Runner now in the form of Gordo. Into Casal. Across to Gordo. In to Vals. Oh. Clearly looking for the foul there, a green card. At the very least for Sweden. Possibly a green card for some earlier play as no paddle foul has been given. Short corner for Spain. Valls. Fast runner. No opportunity now. Spain recycles the ball back out. All the while, Casal working extremely hard. Ball goes into Valls. Is flicked back out to Ermida. Meanwhile, Swedish goalkeeper Jesper Lindberg looking all the time for that shot. 23 seconds left on the shot clock. Vals runs in and fumbles it. It goes to Sweden who are on the break. Once again being thoroughly shut down by the Spanish, but it is Lindsberry on the far right. Puts the ball centrally and Spain pick up the ball. Oyo taking the ball slowly up the right hand side of the pitch for Spain. Gordo. Into Gordo. Opportunity now. Short. Short. Stop. Ball is given as a corner. Sweden possibly too busy complaining to be putting their three and one further away from the keeper and keeping the Spanish boats out. Spanish boats, a oh, lovely ball into the zone there. To Valls, ball is put over the back line by some stellar keeping from Lindberry. Oyo. Puts the ball into Casal. And again, lots of shouting from the Swedish defense. Very, very proud of their performance, and so they should be. Casal goes for the loopy shot. Puts it at least 50 centimeters over the top bar.
that is half time. This is a goalless first half four in the senior men's category. It's Spain versus Sweden. Spain looking pretty dominant in that first half, but unfortunately not putting the goals away that they were expecting to against this Swedish team. The sun is out early today on final Sunday. The heat is rising. Possibly favoring the Spanish who play in this sort of weather all the time. And both teams now an opportunity to disseminate the events of the first half. Spain. The figures do not lie. Ball possession clearly in Spain's favour. Spain have been unrelenting in their attacks on the Swedish defence. Sweden doing a fantastic job of blocking those shots, but possibly not as good of a job at keeping the Spanish boats out in the first place. Referee Mark Thomas clearly very interested in the game currently happening on pitch four. Denmark versus Portugal. It's all right, but it's no pitch three. Plenty of gesticulating from Team Espana's coach on this side of the pitch. Sweden on the other end of the pitch, clearly happy that they have discussed everything that needs to be discussed and are already lining up with a generous 38 seconds left of half time. Twenty six seconds left, and of course, this event would have not run without all of the input and support from the Portuguese Canoe Federation and the European Canoe Association, who have been instrumental in organizing and supporting this event. Call up. By the refs, they say, line up, please, for the second half of, in the senior men's category, Spain versus Sweden. Spain looking, presumably, to put a quick goal in within a minute. That is my prediction. We'll see how wrong I am. And how wrong I am. A start infringement means that Sweden do not have to do any work to take the first possession of the second half. First things first. Edberry goes into the zone, receives the ball to the back of the head, and Spain puts it off for a corner. They will be disappointed with that, that they were not able to get away on the break. A couple of Spanish players in that short space of time all managing, already managing to make it most of the way up the pitch. These guys are phenomenally fast. Short corner for Sweden. Puts the ball into the middle. Oof. Just recycle this all the while. Ed Biri is working hard. And a rocket shot from Lindbergh is blocked by Team Spain. Spain on the break. Fast ball up to Gordo. There it is. Not quite within a minute, but it is 1-0 to Spain. Spain playing much more like Spain already in the second half. Sweden will have their work cut out for them if the Spanish are going to continue to be this quick on the break. Lots of Swedish boats in that zone. 
possibly not providing the cover they're going to need if Spain break on them. Lindbergh working hard. Out to Patron. Back to Patron in the center. Puts the ball into the zone. Shot now. Nope, decides better of it. And illegal kayak tackle there for contact with Team Sweden. Shot, far too many paddles in between the shot and the goal. Spain once again on the break, long ball goes up to Valls. Valls puts it to Casal. And Gordo sends it over. Time out while some deliberation occurs between the referees. Clearly try to decide if a card is to be given. And if a card, which card? Spain could be nervous here. The Eupen Sports goal just rocking there in the wake of the Spanish break. Eupen Sports, of course, providing the goals for this competition for which we are extremely grateful. Ooh, what is going on here? They have given a penalty. A penalty to Spain. I am afraid I didn't see what happened, but somebody Swedish is in the sim bin for a full two minutes. Number 10. Patron. Clearly upsetting somebody in a white shirt. No goal for Spain. Referee calls start infringement. Sweden. Garnering possibly another card for chatting back. And Spain doing exactly what every good team does when they are a player up. Man marking pays off. Gordo now on the attack, puts it over to Armida. Back to Gordo. Armida. Ball across to Valls. Off the top bar. That is disappointing for Spain. They have got 54 seconds left on the Shinbin timer. 54 seconds left when they are a player up on Sweden. Casal working in the zone. And Swedish goalkeeper Zotodal taking the ball off with the throw. It will be a Spanish corner. Gordo takes it short, puts it across to Brother Gordo. Another save for Sweden. I have to say, Swedish goalkeeping, truly the standout feature of this game. Keeping Spain down to one in the face of unrelenting Spanish attack. Paddle foul, says the ref. Spain, an opportunity now. And Sweden are back up to five players. Patron having served his time in the sin bin. 
Sweden staying five out. No longer Amida comes back to cover goal. Clearly satisfied that their players are fast enough. No, they are all coming back to set up a proper defense. Slotting into a tight three and one. They will not be happy with that. Malmbori puts in a blinder from outside the zone. I don't think the Spanish keeper was expecting that to reach him. One goal apiece for Spain versus Sweden. Winners of this game will go on to play for 9th, 10th. Losers for 11th, 12th. Sweden looking to improve on the 12th place at Europeans in saint Omer in 2017. Spain already fallen from grace, reigning European champions in the 9th to 12th bracket. The shock of this tournament. Gordo takes it short, puts it back out to Oyo. Illegal holding, says the referee. Resetting the shot clock for Spain. They will have another minute. Ooh. Wide from Gordo. Referee Mark Thomas handing out cards left and right. Appears to be two green cards for Sweden and one green card for Spain. Sweden will have to tidy their game up. Patron appealing to the ref saying the Spanish are tackling outside the six meters. Not sure anyone would agree with that. I think the Spanish are doing a fantastic job. Team Spain not afraid to push out. One of the fastest paddling nations in the world. Sprinting in now is Nabo. Takes the shot. Blocked before it even reaches Spanish keeper Amida. Amida now on the break. Finds Gordo, who takes an extra paddle, puts it across to Casal. Foul on the goalkeeper. Disappointing for Spain. Making silly mistakes now. Amida is back in goal. And Edberry being thoroughly ejected by Alejandro Casal from the zone. Nabo and Edri working hard. Running in, it's Sertadal. Ball back to Sertadal. Over to Patron. And Lind Malmbury. Over to Team Spain. That is not what they wanted from this attack. It is. Gordo running up the far right of the pitch, takes the extra dribble. He will have the opportunity to shoot. Shut down by Team Sweden, who are possibly now on a break against Spain. The Spanish extremely quick. Opportunity now goes into Tzertadal. Shot is deflected. Spain calling for a keeper foul. It is not a keeper foul if your defense is doing nothing to prevent the boats from drifting in. Sweden will not be penalized for poor defending on Spain's part. Running in, shot now. It's recycled back out. Yes. 
Sweden just slowing this down. 45 seconds, 30 seconds on the shot clock. Shot clock about 10 seconds behind game clock. We can expect Spain to move the fastest anyone has ever seen should this ball drop to Team Spain. Sweden on the attack with nine seconds left on the clock. Illegal holding calls the ref. Time's out, which will reset the shot clock. Sweden, one final opportunity. Of course, no green cards in the final minute of the game. It is Alejandro Gordo who will spend the rest of this game in the sin bin. Patron signaling to his team, open up the zone, open up the zone. With one player extra compared to Spain. This surely should be in Sweden's favor. Patron takes the ball into the zone. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. Runs in. Puts the ball in and it is blocked. And this game has finished. One goal apiece. Spain to Sweden. This game may need a result. We are possibly looking to play some more polo. It goes into extra time. Five minutes of extra time has been put on the clock. Spain making uncharacteristic errors here. Sweden keeping their cool much better in the second half, holding off the Spanish to one all at the end of full time. This is the ninth to 12th bracket. This game needs a result. Wisely ball in the ball release. Sponsors of this event. Of course, we have also been helped greatly by Queenborough City Council and the University of Queenborough. University of Queenborough, one of the oldest in Europe. I would highly recommend visiting anyone at home. You get into the central courtyard and it looks more like a castle. It is stunning. And yes, you can see the pitches from up there. They look gorgeous from up there. calls a lineup for extra time in this Spain versus Sweden ninth to 12th playoff it will be five minutes each way it is worth noting of course these teams have been playing for this is day four of playing for them they really could have done without extra time especially with a playoff to go. This now becomes a test of endurance. And mental strength. Pitch three attracting quite the following. Wow. 
everybody Swedish within a 10 mile radius, which is about 20 people, has turned up. Sprint now, much more even this time. The referee calls illegal kayak tackle and it will be Sweden who take possession early on in this game. paddling in the zone. <laughs> Sweden puts away goal number one of extra time. That is full time. Sweden have knocked reigning European champions Spain down into 11th and 12th. Meanwhile, Sweden will improve on their previous performance in Santa Maria where they came 12th. They are now playing for 9th and 10th. And all of that racket you can hear is all 20 of the Swedish supporters. <laughs> what an absolute belter from Paterone. 35 seconds into the extra time. Who could have called this result? Sweden hugging, overjoyed with that result, and so they should be. Just fantastic goalkeeping on their part. Keeping out Spain, despite an onslaught of Spanish attacks. Just fantastic work, well deserved to Sweden. In just a few minutes, I will hand you over to my close friend and colleague, George Lungley, who is handling the battle for the semi-finals in the women's category. It will be Italy versus the Netherlands. Netherlands looking for a redemption story to try and claw their way back into the semi-final. Italy looking to maintain their position in the top group to go through to the semi-final. This should be a battle of the ages. That is happening at 10.50 this morning. I sincerely hope you will join us back on pitch three at 10.50.
sides of Hostile Child here. Yes. Yeah, Dorothy, yes, I went yesterday from uh, there at home. Listen. Here we are again at the European Canoe Polo Championship in Portugal. This is organized by the European Canoe Association and the Portuguese Canoe Federation. This game due to start in just a minute, so the teams will be lining up shortly. So the important thing about this game, Netherlands come top of the bottom half group, Italy bottom of the top half group, and these two teams are now fighting for a semi-final place against the top seeded team in this league. They, the winner of this game will play Germany in a semi-final, securing them at least fourth place. Germany being a very solid team, having I believe beaten both of these already, definitely beaten Italy. It means they are unlikely to get into the final, but fourth place nonetheless. Or even maybe third. And here they are, off we go. For Netherlands, Selina Dijkstra. And for France, Roberta Catania going for the ball. That, that's a play on in favor of Italy. The boat of Selina Dijkstra riding too high and then yeah it's, it's an illegal jostle in favor of the Netherlands jostling outside of the six meter area so Italy sorry in favor of Italy so Italy able to take the ball from right in front of the Dutch goal Italy now trying to drive a wedge trying to find an opportunity to take a shot through we have an opportunity on this side Madalina Madalina Lago there with an opportunity, but it's not quite working out. And then trying to pass the ball back, not getting it where they need to. And yet the play on in favour of Netherlands decided no advantage. So they get the paddle foul. Italy, of course, having time there to get back and cover their area. And now we'll see how the Dutch attack does. Okay, driving again, similar tactics, try and drive in. Number eight, Diver Diverci, Diverci, Diverci Bink on the left hand side, trying to drive out Maria Spanska. Italy there, just managing to keep her out. And here we go, Netherlands bringing in the ball, trying to get past the, get past the defender. Sliding past there. 
Alicia Vanderberg almost with a great situation, but the angle a bit too tight. And it being deflected by the keeper, Madalena Lego. Netherlands with another attack, another opportunity. The corner resetting the shot clock for them. They've got loads of time, but of course they need some goals. We must have a result from this game, so a draw will result in golden goal extra time. Because of course we need to know who will be in the semi-final against Germany. And here we go. Ne Netherlands there trying to get the ball in inside the Italian defence. Not working out for them. Oh, yeah, we have a bit of complaining there from the Italians. Number eight for Italy, Silvia Corgani, trying to wrestle the ball off Selena Dijkstra. And <laughs> the referee calling it in favour of Selena Dijkstra. And we might the, the referee has a green card in their hand. So it looks like someone's getting one. We'll find out who in a minute. Yeah, and that is a card there for number six. I believe that might have, since they weren't involved directly in the tackle, probably for the unsportsmanlike calling afterwards. And Netherlands just being told to take the foul, take the ball from where the foul occurred. Netherlands again with another opportunity. See what they can accomplish with it. Not quite finding the gap. Italian defence here holding really strong. Able to drive out all of the Dutch attackers so far. Another opportunity, trying to get the ball wide. They might be able to get it in. There are, there's a defender in the way. Had a Prestepino there. Really nice defensive work. Driving off one, moving over to the next. Netherlands here, yet to find a suitable gap. The Italian defence just being a little bit too strong so far. And they're really going to need to work. Oh! Another pass into a runner inside, but yet another Italian defender there, able to get in the way. Again, another opportunity. Another pass around, back in. And this is exactly why it's not working for them. Charlotte Binks there, in a position underneath the goal, but two sets of paddles in the way. And that won't be... It's just too many paddles to get that ball through. Netherlands, however, did get the corner and do get just another opportunity. And they can just keep this going as long as they can force the corners. They can hold possession. 60 seconds at a time. Giving them the time to work an opportunity. Italy, on the other hand, happy to let them attack them, knowing that the strength of their defence is enough to hold them off. And they've got a whole other half after this to, um, to punish them. Of course, a mistake there. A drop pass. And they send one player out to harass it. Roberta Catania thinking she might have an opportunity to gain possession and get a break. But the Dutch just about holding on to it. Netherlands coming in again. They've got those players inside, but they're being hammered by the Italians. We'll just give the shot over the top, which is the pass back out. And that's what it'll be. Again, another opportunity. The Italian defence holding. Goes to the pot shot over... The Italian defenders, of course, there was really not much time on the shot clock left there. Kind of forced their hand. Luckily, the Netherlands being able to hold onto the ball off the rebound. And we are a quarter of the way through this game now. And here we go, the Netherlands trying to squeeze their way in. The middle pin there, Ada Prestepino, doing some solid work to keep the Dutch out. They have yet to get past her. This time, number eight there, Tuberki Bink, trying to get herself in a favourable position, but just being worked out. And there you go, trying again to force her way in, being blocked by Ada Pristopino. And that's a part, and that pass there, trying to get into her, and it's unfortunately not quite making it and getting straight to the Italian goalkeeper. Italy here, not quite getting a break. And the Netherlands getting back. 
to defend. So the question now is how will the Italian attack and the Dutch defence match up? Will we have a similar situation with the Dutch defence being able to pretty confidently hold out the Italians? It's not looking that way so far. We have an opportunity. Number eight there, Dvorky Bink, being forced out by the Italians, giving them a further opportunity. The Italians there on the rebound, just about able to hold onto the ball, driving further players in. And there seems to be a gap here on the near-hand side, but they're just not getting the runner available. The Netherlands there, able to cover it just about. Different opportunity on the far side, goes for the shot. Blocked by the keeper. A solid save there by Sarissa van Vandenaal. Oh, and that'll be holding in favour of Italy. They've got a number of passes available. Goalkeeper out of position and Madalena Lago finishing that off. Putting Italy the one goal they need in the lead. This is not a group game, so all they need is just that one goal lead to put them in the win and secure them that semi-final place. Another scrabbling for the ball, this time in favour of Italy. Italy getting the break. Can they get it to number 10 at the front? Pass range might not be that far. Unfortunately, the Dutch being able to get back into position. Italy here trying to see if they can hold the Dutch out. Can they work themselves a good position? Can they work themselves a gap? from which to send one of their shooters in. Here we go, number one, Ada Prestopino on the far side. Number four now, Madeline Lego. You notice the same players keep getting mentioned, the workhorses of these teams. Another go. And that, unfortunately, number eight for Italy, Silvio Cogoni, hitting, driving one of the Dutch players into the keeper, and that Pushes that put, that keeper out of position, causing an illegal kayak tackle in favour of the Dutch. The Netherlands now have two minutes. Shot clock depending, in which they can try and get themselves back into the draw, back even again. Going for the wide shot around the corner, and that is unfortunate. The paddle's in the way, forcing them to take it really close and just hitting the side of the net profile of the net from that angle is really quite tight which is of course why the 3 and one defence sits in front of the goal the idea being that if you can get the opposing team to shoot from around the side it's just that much harder to hit Italy again another opportunity lots of Dutch players in the way can they find a gap through them squeezing past one it's just not quite enough again looking for this gap on the far side Netherlands plugging the gap as fast as they possibly can, but of course opening one on the other side. Italy here trying to force the Dutch to make some bad decisions, giving them two bad choices to choose between. One minute left on the game clock, only 20 seconds on the shot clock. Italy will be forced to take a shot soon. 15 seconds now on the shot clock. Which will Italy, Italy take? Passing it to Ada Prestopino, she goes for the shot and it's blocked by the defender there. Silvio Cogoni, and most importantly, resetting the shot clock and giving Italy the remaining 40 seconds of this half with the ball. Netherlands here deciding the time is not timed out, so Italy here happy to take their time. 25 seconds now. They've used up a fair amount of it. 20 seconds. Can they get a last shot? Put them comfortably two goals ahead. Another opportunity, not quite materialising for them. You can see here the Dutch defence really working to cover every possible gap. Potential opportunity here on the left. They take the shot, it drops, four seconds to go. Netherlands unable to do anything for, about it. Italy just getting the ball and holding it for those last few seconds. Italy finishing this half, one goal in the lead. Now we will have one more half these two teams to compete for that semi-final place. As I mentioned before, Italy secured themselves a top half finish in the first group stage and how unfortunately came bottom of that top half, pushing them into this playoff. 
the Dutch, on the other hand, coming third in their five-team first stage group, putting them into the bottom half, and then coming top of that bottom half, defeating all comers. These two teams now competing for a semi-final place against Germany, the top team so far. That will be an uphill battle, that game later today, for whoever wins this. Germany definitely one of the favorites for the final. Worth mentioning while you can see it, up on the top left, the city and University of Coimbra, the city council as well, being a great help for this competition, providing facilities and accommodation. The local club here, Club Fluvial de Coimbra. And our sponsors, Olga Santa Casa and Upin Sports, who provided all the goals for the competition. And finally, the Portuguese Institute for Sports and Youth. The three minute timer for half time hasn't started. Uh, slight problem with the game the table screen. So we might have a short delay before the start of the next half. Just take a break here while we wait for the table to fix whatever's gone wrong. They're just explaining to both teams that there'll be a short delay while they sort out the clock. Looks like the repair might take a while, or maybe not. It's looking like it might be fixed. Yep, some thumbs up from the referee. We are good to go for the second half of this potential semi final or fifth place playoff. Teams have lined up. For Italy, we have Maria Szymanska, and it is. A start infringement in favour of the Netherlands. Charlotte Bakes there was on the sprint. Sorry, wrong way round. Charlotte Bakes there causing a start infringement, putting it in favour of Italy. Italy getting to start with the ball. And of course, try and extend 
their one goal lead. What can they do? Standard tactics here, trying to drive a gap in the Dutch defence, looking for another opportunity. Getting the way in, and that is perfect. Number two there, Maria Szczepanska, driving away in, receiving the pass, and blasting it into the back of the net. Netherlands now have a steep hill to climb. As I said, if this ends in a draw, we must have a result. Netherlands will have to score at least two goals in the next nine minutes, and then a further goal. In, in, yeah, that is a push there. Netherlands driving too far into the Italian defence, hitting the Italian keeper. Italy there with a potential break. Netherlands do have a goalkeeper in place, but will it be enough? And they go for the, oh, they go, went for the pass across. It's intercepted by a paddle. Push there, but Netherlands just about holding onto the ball. They have one Dutch player up the pitch. Italy pounding there on the Dutch player and getting it back. Italy with the ball, slowing things down again. They have the time now. They have the time now to just run down the shot clock. Every 60 second segment of the remaining eight minutes, they can use up as much of that as possible. Even better if they can force a defend the goalie or the defenders to get a corner. The shot there, entirely undefended by the Dutch, just going straight off the bar. And unfortunately there, the pass what? back by the what? Dutch player to the keeper when the keeper was already off. Dutch here needing another two goals. But what can they do? Not yet choosing to play out, choosing to hold the 3 on one defence. The Italy here, not with a huge amount of pressure. The Italian coach nearby shouting something that in English would sound like shot, but I have a feeling shot! it means something quite different. Italy now with 20 seconds left on the shot clock. On the shot clock. Not long. Passing it over the top. The Dutch defence driving itself back over the other side, trying to plug the gaps they created. Dutch hit, playing out a bit. That's a nice interception there. Italy looks like they might get the ball back, but it really runs on the clock. Yep, the Dutch there forced to take another two shots there due to the amount of time left on the shot clock. And I believe that is a paddle foul in favour of the Dutch there. But of course, taking them a bit too long to get to the ball. Italy there, able to get back and plug the gaps for a break. Shame. Dutch could really do with a nice break right now. But maybe we'll, they'll get one later. Bring the ball up the pitch. They've used 15 seconds of the shot clock already. Italy now. Can they keep up the solid defence they have so far? <laughs> the Dutch number six there. Hoping for the pass in. Kind of just going, kind of shrugging. As the pass doesn't come to them. As they drove their way in. Here, Dutch going for another play. Another attempt in. The Italians coming out to meet them. Giving them very few options. Oh, no, no. The shot over the top. And that is unfortunate. I think they, the shot clock was running so low, they just had to take it. The Italian keeper there, Madeline Lago, not needing to respond as the shot goes over the top. And here you can see the Dutch realising they really need to put the pressure on the Italians to give themselves an opportunity back in, that, in this game. Goal difference doesn't matter. If they concede more goals, it's worth the risk of trying to get a few more. They have five and a half minutes in which to get at least two goals. Italy so far coping quite well. Italy quickly substituting two more players, forcing the Dutch to rotate who they're marking. Italy potentially getting a player free here if they're not careful. And that is a paddle foul in favour of the Netherlands. And, we, and by the looks of it, yeah, paddle foul in favour of the Netherlands. No cards. Dutch here. Looking if they can get a shot. And it's blocked again by the keeper. And that went off after the block. So it will be a corner in favour of the Netherlands. It's 
a shame there. They got the ball off the five out press, weren't able to get the break they sorely need. Another shot, another block by the Italian defenders. The Dutch here putting a lot more pressure on the Italian defence than they were before. If they could have done this for the rest of the game, it would have been great. And here we go, what can the Dutch do? Driving their way in. Can they force a gap? Three of them on one side. One out covering. Another shot blocked by a defender. Italy being driven off the pitch yet again to give the Dutch another corner. Four minutes left of the game. Another reset shot clock. Still two goals in the gap. Can Netherlands close it? Looking to pass it around. Looking for that further opportunity. Passing it off again. And that's a drop ball. Italy securing it. Can they get clear? And the, the Dutch here pressing them again, going for that five-man press. Can they force the Italians to make a mistake? Give them back the ball. The Italians here deliberately choosing to cross each other's paths, making it even more difficult for the Dutch to get one on each. And they have a, they have got one free. Ada Prestopino, there, got free, but unfortunately was shut down before she could get a reasonable goal shot on goal. Each time the Italians managing to get on the goal side of the Dutch players, if they can receive the ball and go for that shot, the Flavia Landolina tempted to go for the long shot, deciding better of it. The Dutch players here stuck between choosing goal or choosing to mark the player and the long shot there just missing. Three minutes left. The Dutch still needing two goals. They can very much do this. The pressure they're putting on the Italians here. You can see the Italians wanting to serve on a regular basis. They are getting tired. The Dutch will be getting tired too. This has been a long tournament and these guys are having to be working really hard on this five out. That shot there, blocked by the keeper. Another attempt to drive them off the pitch. It works. It'll be another corner for Netherlands. Netherlands managing to get the ball back over and over again. Less than three minutes now to get these two goals. The Italian coach here screaming at them to get moving. The Dutch there, another shot, another rebound, not quite able to get hold of it. Italy managing to get the ball just away from their goal line. Another press by the Dutch, trying to drive the player off. And yep, in the act of trying to take that pass, he takes the ball over the line. The Dutch with another sideline ball. Can they get it into a favourable position? They pass it out back. Can they get a player around this Italian defence? Italian defence there, blocking each of them as they come in. They're in close. Will they just choose to shoot through the paddles? They could do. Passing it back out. Each and every single one of them deciding better of it. And that is another block and another corner. Less than two minutes now for the Dutch to get these two goals back. The pressure really starting to make the Italians make mistakes. It's working. It's doing exactly what they need to do. They're not quite getting the opportunity they need. Another Italian interception. Dutch just about managing to keep hold of the ball. Pass to a player underneath the goal. She takes the shot. Another save by Madalina Lego. She has saved this Italian team's bacon multiple times. Solid effort there by that player. Without her, this Italian team would not be in the favourable position they are right now. Less than a minute and a half to go. The Dutch can still get two further goals. It's definitely possible. Trying to drive their way in. Trying to force a gap. Passing it out. Can they get another shot? And this one goes wide. And unfortunately, with just over a minute left, the Italians now have possession. The Dutch here will have to force a press, as they have been doing. The question now being, they need to win the ball quickly. They do not have long. They need to get to every single one of their players. Italian number seven potentially getting free. They're getting, again, Italy holding onto the ball. They know as well that they don't need to score a goal. They just need to hold onto the ball. Unfortunately, they do not want to be doing it inside their own half. If they slip up inside their own half, the Dutch can get another shot. That's not what they want. Italy head just a bit able to hold onto the ball. They're not quite looking around. Number one there, really in great open space. And again, the Dutch are trying to hammer the Italian ball. If they can intercept one of these passes, and get hold of it, that will be a perfect shooting opportunity for them. But with only 20 seconds left, it's looking really unlikely for them to get the two goals they need. Italy being able to hold on. Another 13 seconds. Can Italy hold on for it long enough? They might even get free and get a final goal. They're not choosing for it, they're playing safe. They just want to keep the ball in their position. Four seconds left. Can they outlast it? Got hold of the ball, and that is game. Italy 
and have secured themselves a semi-final place against Germany. The Netherlands will have fifth. There will be no more games for the Dutch here this week. They have come fifth in the women's senior division of this European Canoe Polo Championship. The Italians here, some solid effort by them. Great work surviving under the pressure of the Netherlands there. Yes. Keeping them off and keeping the ball for the last, well, quite a few minutes of the game there, really. So now we start to move into the latter stages of the tournament. With we already ha we have had simultaneously with this game the men's semi-finals playing on pitch one and two. So now there is only one more game here on pitch three, and that'll be at 12:10. That is a 13th to 15th playoff in the senior men's category. But in the meantime. A round of applause there for the teams. And as I said, this pitch will come back to you at 
que le empague. Rebaño.
Eles são fixos, o material pelo menos é bem da resistência. Mas este em comparação com o da Daniela. Não, dá bem, se tiver de medir. Ele diz que não. É pá, olha o que eu quero ir confortável. Não vai, não vai. Vai, vai na bagageira. Tinha cheio. A bagageira vinha mais ou menos.
the final game on Hitch 3 in the European Canoe Polo Championships, organised by the European Canoe Association and the Portuguese Canoe Federation. Teams we have today, Russia and Finland, competing along with Austria for third to 15th place in the senior men's category. Russia have already beaten Austria, so for them, a victory here would secure them 13th. For Austria, on the other hand, a win here would put them and Russia in contention. The better they do, the uh, higher they'll place themselves. Russia beat Austria with an eight goal difference. So for Finland to put themselves in 13th place solidly, they would have to beat Russia and Austria by a combined number of nine goals. And we have teams lining up. On the sprint for Finland, we have Laurie Parala. And for Russia, on the sprint, we have Vladislav Skomorovkov. And here we go. Sprint is going for the ball. It's looking pretty close once again. Russia just edging out there, and yes, they have the ball. Nice pass there. Russia able. Russia able to start this game with possession. Russia here driving their way in, trying to find a gap. They looks like they've got. Uh, maybe not. They've got many opportunities. The Finnish defence here will have to try and keep them out as best they can. A wonderful block there by Marco Hamal. Hamalainen, the Finnish goalkeeper. Tactic here by Russia, drive their way into defence, try and get hopefully a shot one on one the keeper. Not bothering there and just happily taking a shot through two defenders on the goalkeeper. And therefore blocked by the Finnish paddles. Finland here not quite getting the break as the pressure by Russia forcing them to take their time. go, Finland now with their response. Prussia, Russia giving there, forcing Finland to use up half of their shot clock time period already. So Finland will only have a couple of attempts, or not, fluffing a pass there, stolen by Vladislav Skomorovkov. And Russia able to not quite get a break due to the speed at which Finland got back. Finland here racing to get their defence set up and to keep the Russians out of their goal. And will it be enough? Another attempt. And there we have it. Vladislav Skomorovkov stealing the ball back and getting the shot and the goal there. Doing all the work in that play. Russia now one goal up, less than two minutes into the first half of this game. Finland will need to answer. If Finland doesn't lose by less than eight goals, they will go into second place in the group. Of course, that's not what they want. Finland here trying to drive a wedge, and it's not working so far. Russians reasonably happily keeping them out. Another run in here now by the Finnish coming. Russia shutting down the passes. Play over there with the ball. Number five for Finland, Marco. Bring the ball in and just being shut down entirely. Same thing occurring again, a possible slight drop ball, but recovered. Russia here putting quite a lot of pressure on the Finnish players as they bring the ball in. Punishing the fact that the Finnish get quite close before deciding to pass it off. The pass there, attempting to go into the middle there, and being deflected by Russian paddle. Russia here with a possible break opportunity. Again, Finland getting back that little bit too close for, too fast for them. And we have another 
the Russian attack. The advantage of the three and one defence here being they can successfully if they can successfully keep the Russian players out, they can just sit and wait for Russia to make a mistake and then abuse it when they do. Russia here still trying to find that gap, not quite getting it. Last time they didn't need it, they just took the shot straight over and it doesn't matter. Possible loose ball, it's probably underneath them. Finland looking to get it out, another scrabble for the ball. Finland edging it just there, but he's unsupported, he's by himself. Will Finland be able to give him a pass? And they've just about secured the ball, but no break. And that is unfortunate, that would have been a golden opportunity for this team to get back. Really nice steal. And now they'll have to do things the hard way. Breaking their way through the Russian defence. already formed up. And that is, yeah, a kayak tackle on the Russian keeper. Handing the ball back over to the Russians. Finland racing back. Russia hot on their heels. Will they get that ball into the middle? They pass it into the middle. He will get an opportunity. P finish paddle in there, getting in. Yes, that's a lead. It's a paddle foul by Russia. Finland getting the play on, giving the advantage. It goes the long shot. And that, unfortunately, just coming off the side of the goal. Finland there, choosing to go for the long shot when they possibly could have waited. And we'll never know. Well, that would have been better for them. Went out a quarter of the way through this game. Russia leading by one goal. And Finland really having to, to work to keep the Russians out. But it seems to be coping so far. Another shot, another block. Russia quite happy to shoot through the finished paddles and goalkeeper. And of course it worked for them earlier. The one goal they've got through two defenders. The speed and force of their shot working in their favour. And that was beautifully done. One player gliding across the defence. One player gliding across the defence there, opening a gap on the right hand side, squeezing the ball into the player underneath the goal, just flicking it into the top. Finland therefore two goals down and they're gonna have to change something up if they want to get ahead. In this group, Russia did defeat Austria by eight goals. It was the, s the end scoreline was 12-4 in Russia's favour. We'll see how Finland cope. And that's a beautiful situation. And that is unfortunate. Number six there for Finland, Jerry Mansner. Getting in into a really good position underneath the goal. Fortunately, Russia deciding to shut him down, getting so many paddles in the way. And of course the shot deflecting off one of those. Finland again with another attempt. Can they get a run in? Undefended. Driving in. They have an opportunity on this side. Finish the Russian player capsizing on top of him. Unfortunately Russia being able to respond in time and Finland not quite having enough speed with the ball to get the runs they need. Every single pass. Oh, that's a nice interception there. Russian with another break. Can they keep the ball for long enough? Number four here on the right. They get it to him. Alexander Stona. And looks like they're going to pass it through. And we have a shot, and that is wonderful. Number six there for Russia, Egor Sandorov. Just showing, despite the defender coming back, drawing them to the one player and then letting, and then just getting the pass through. It was almost deflected. There was a finished paddle to it. They just managed to get it past. Putting Russia 3 0 in the lead. And it looks like, unless Russia changed some, or unless Finland changed something up, this will be a stomp in Russia's favour. Another shot. And oh! Number five for Finland there, Marto Hamelainen. Getting a goal for Finland. Just as I said, they need to change something up to get themselves back in this game and that's exactly what they do. The question is, can they do it three more times? Here we go again. That was a bit of a sloppy pass, unfortunately. Finland being able to get back the ball. 
They're looking for that break. Number 10 on the head. Can they get it to him? Can he survive long enough? They've got the pass. It's intercepted by the paddle. Finland having to race for it. They've got number 7 now. Getting it to him. And unfortunately, it's just missed. And he tries to flick it over the head. But it's not quite enough. Russia happily getting a paddle to it. There's opportunities like that. Finland's not quite able to capitalise on for costing them this game so far. Russia again. Driving their way in. Finland's only just getting the full five four players. A play on in favour of Russia. Reset shot clock. Another 60 seconds for them. Russia. And again, another pass. Not quite going into hands. And Russia, unfortunately, having to reset back out. But due to that reset, that shot clock reset, they still have another 45 seconds. And we have a timeout there. Finland player number eight there with the green card for the paddle foul. Interception there being a bit too close to the Russian player's hands. And they get the shot. Oh! Number six there for Finland, for Russia. Igor Zandrov taking the opportunity while the Finnish were distracted by the card. And as soon as he was allowed to, taking the shot straight through the Finnish goalkeeper. But it's worth mentioning, of course, that when a timeout occurs, as soon as that's over, you can just go straight for a free shot. And if the other team isn't paying attention, you get a nice, easy goal from it. Russia now 4-1 in the lead. Finland three goals behind with only a minute left of this half. And the shot clock, of course, is always ticking. 20 seconds left on it already. Finland here with an opportunity. Can they work it? And that's a nice attempt, but it's blocked by Alexander Zatona. Russia looking for another break. Finland have got a lot of players back, but the goal is still undefended. They're going to go for the long shot. Russia just bouncing off the top bar. And that will be a Finnish goal line throw with less than 30 seconds to go. The shot clock can no longer mattering. 23 seconds. Less than 20 seconds. Finland with one last opportunity to get a goal this half. And they're running it down quite fast. They will only have the one run now. Less than 10 seconds to go. And they just pile it in over the top. Number four, Alexander Zatona happily blocking that. And with less than a second go, it's not going to matter about the corner. End of this first half. Russia leading four to one. As I said before, Russia did beat Austria by 12 goals to four. A solid victory. And that's currently put Russia in first place in this group for 13th overall. Finland here doing better than Austria were. But still got a way to go if they want to be leading. So, the question is, will they change anything up significantly in the second half? Will they look to put more pressure on the Russian side? Maybe go for a two and two or a five and press to give them the opportunities. After all, this is a group stage, so depending on the game against Austria, goal difference may matter. So it's not the same as most of the other games that we'll see today, where if you happen to lose by a lot of goals, it's better to keep pushing and try and score some, and try and get yourself back in the game rather than just, just being safe and trying to not concede. This game will end on a draw in the city of Canberra, 
for this last game on pitch three. Facilities here provided by the City Council of Coimbra and the University of Coimbra. Alongside Rubial de Coimbra, the local blue club. And our sponsors, Roga Santa Casa and Upin Sports, the supplier of all the goals. And finally, the Portuguese Institute for Sports and Team. Okay, teams with less than a minute at the half time break. Beginning to line back up. Finish Russian. So I have no idea what the coaches are saying to their teams. There we go. Referees just confirming with the table. And soon <laughs> Second half <laughs> of this group stage 13. <laughs> Here we go. Sprinting already for the ball. And that is a start <laughs> infringement for Finland. Handing the ball straight to Russia. Aim Tolinen. A bit too far forward, potentially, or starting a bit too early. And that just means Russia gets to dictate play in the first section of this. Piling straight in, squeezing themselves past the Finnish defence, but unfortunately the pass intercepted and they've hit the keeper. Finland with an opportunity to get back into this game. Can they get the break? Passing it around. Number two going for the middle, which is a missed pass and a missed opportunity. And it's taking them a bit too long to get back to that ball. They might still be able to work it, but there is now a goalkeeper in place and two defenders. And yep, Finland deciding to keep the ball back out. As I've been saying before, it's opportunities like that. Finland have had enough of them to be in this game. But it's unfortunate. Passes not quite going to hands. Meaning the team is missing out on the crucial goals they need to secure this game. Russia, on the other hand, on their breaks, have not had that fault. Shot clock, of course, always ticking down. Less than 15 seconds. They will be taking a shot very soon. That's another pass, another missed pass. Luckily, Finland just about securing it, but with less than 10 seconds, and that will be a sideline in favour of Finland, just tapped out by a Russian header. And of course, the shot clock then goes. The fact that no shot was taken, despite the, goal, the ball going out, does mean the shot clock keeps ticking. So Finland therefore losing possession. Russia now back on the attack. Shot clock always ticking. Russia driving the ball in, trying to push their player in. Number seven there. There is no goal. An illegal push or holding in favour of Finland. So that was no goal. Russia still 4-1 in the lead. Finland with another opportunity to try and get back. And we've seen they're capable of the breaks. It seems to be their only opportunity so far. They've not managed anything underneath. Well, they managed that one goal underneath the Russian goal, underneath the Russian inside the Russian defence. Sorry, but it's not quite enough so far. Another shot deflected by Russian paddles. There's a bit of wrestling there. Yeah, Finland there for holding on the Russian player. Russian given Russia given a free throw. And they've got some players inside the finish zone. Passing it there to number seven, number one. He's got the shot. Will he take it? Passes it back across. And that loose, a loose ball this time by Russia. Finland trying to pressure it. It'll be interesting to see whether, as we get into the later stages of this game, whether Finland decide to pressure the ball or whether they're happy to concede the form for one loss. Russia here again, piling their way in. The force with which they're pushing back the Russian, the, the, the Finnish defense far greater than the alternative. Another shot by Russia. Finland managing to secure the ball on the rebound. They... Oh! 
That is a, a spicy goal there. Finland throwing the ball up in the air for the pass, intercepted by the Russian paddle, bouncing off the inside of the goal and just being finally tapped in by number two for Russia, Vladislav Skomorokarov. Of course, the, ball, the goal not counting until the ball went all the way in. Putting Russia 5-1 in the lead. Six minutes left to go. Finland again driving in. Not quite the same damage to the Russian defence as the finish was before. Finland will need to work a bit more to create themselves the gaps they need. Most of the Russian defenders committed to the far side. Finland trying to address that and it's not quite working. We have a timeout, another foul. It's a legal kayak tackle in favour of Finland. Number one for Russia given a green card. That's now one card apiece for the two teams. Russia now just piling in as many defenders and as many paddles in front of the shot. Finland being told they can take it closer. Still closer yet, yeah, and that, that is where they should be taking it from. And just, oh, yep, yeah, no, there we go. And presenting the ball, and he takes the shot straight away. Of course, deflected by the multitude of Russian paddles in the way. And without that protection now of having to take the free shot, Russia just pile driving them straight out of their defence. Finland now struggling to regain the position they just held. 40 seconds left to go on the shot clock. Lots of time. Not choosing to last out. Of course, for them, they need the goals. They need they time is their enemy right now. Russia four goals up with just a quarter of this game left to go. And with that loose ball, Russia getting back down the finish half. Driving their way in. We have a runner looking for the shot. He's got options on both sides. Takes number six, goes for the shot. And another kayak tackle on the goalkeeper. Russia here with a bit too much speed and a bit too much pressure. But it doesn't matter because they are four goals in the lead. There we go. Finland now getting away. Russia choosing to put a little bit of pressure on the finish, forcing them to take their time, bring the ball back up. Shot clock always ticking, of course. Finland now need to work themselves a gap, need to find a way in. They go in, they're taking a shot, and it's deflected off. Three in the way, and it'll be another finished corner. Four minutes left to go, another reset shot clock, another shot, another deflection off the Russian keeper. Number four there for Russia. Alexander Zatona doing a solid effort of keeping these shots out. Forty-five seconds on the shot. Oh no, there we go. Reset. The corner. And that. Oh, less than a foot from top of the bar. But Russia can afford to miss these. They are still four goals ahead. Finland unable to get through the Russian defence at all. In which case, just another three and a half minutes for Finland to, to try their attack. Unfortunately, a late reset of the shot clock means that Finland still have a lot of time with the ball. Russia choosing to pressure out, taking players, taking people to each of the Finnish players. A shot from underneath the goal, <laughs> and that's nicely done. Finland number four, Aim Medinan. Getting a nice shot behind the Russian defender and goalkeeper. But one goal is unlikely to be enough. It's possible. Three minutes is enough time to get three goals. But I don't think this Finnish side is going to be capable of it since it's taken them 17 minutes just to get these two. Russia again. Another shot deflected off the keeper past the goalkeeper's paddles. Looks number four there again for Russia. Alexander Zatona getting yet another goal, almost in retaliation for Finland scoring. Less than three minutes to go. The 
again. Finland still trying to work their way a gap in the Russian defence, and it's still not really working. No significant gaps forming. The slight mistake for that last goal last time it seems to be covered. Again, oh, number ten there for Finland. Trying to see if he can find a gap. Russia thinking they had it covered, and only just. Just a quick timeout while they go and fetch the balls. We're running at them on the pitch. They keep sending so many long. One of the Russian substitutes being asked to go and fetch one. And Finland again. Another reset shot clock. But just over two minutes left on the time. So they'll have three shot clock periods if they use the full extent of them. But of course, Finland will that. They'll want to take the opportunity as quick as they possibly can. Finland from this end shouting loudly. I've no idea what for. Finland just about getting the ball back from that rebound. And the Russian defence falling apart because they deliberately run, out, run out thinking they had the ball. But unfortunately, Russia recovering faster than Finland. Giving Finland another uphill struggle to get past the Russian defence. Another interception. Just putting the finish off that bit more, slowing them down. Using up more of that shot clock. Another shot. Deflected off the defender's paddle. Another corner for Finland. Less than a minute and a half here. It is unlikely, well, almost impossible for Finland to win this game right now. Technically always possible, which is very unlikely. Russia getting the interception, getting the ball back. Let's see if they can get a break. Let's see if they can extend their goal difference. It won't matter if they win anyway. But hey, go for glory regardless. Russia here with the pass across, number four, one defender in his way, trying to get it past, he fluffs it. Oh, and we have a penalty. Number three there, with an illegal push, I believe, in the act of shooting. And this means for the Russian number five, Ivan Nibili, will be taking a penalty against Finland number five, Marco Hanalein. Just making sure both players are on the line they should be. Of course, all the other players behind the six meters line. And here, rushing on the shot. Will he get it? And that's deflected off the Finnish paddle. Number five for Finland, Marco Hanalein. Blocking that nicely. Goes off for a corner and gives Russia the ball for the last 35 seconds of this game. Assuming Russia will be happy to hold to it, or maybe not. Blasting a shot, trying to get the rebound, got the rebound. 25 seconds left. Will they secure one more goal? They've got the opportunity to do so. Of course, Finland with the penalty down a player. 15 seconds left. That player will not be able to come back on for the rest of this game. 10 seconds left. They have the number advantage. Finland with a last minute ditch attempt at a goal. Seven versus five. The Russian player, that bit faster, drives underneath, secures the ball for the end of the game. And that puts Russia ahead, 6-2. Russia now having secured 13th place in the senior men's. Finland currently in second place, but will play Austria to determine 14th and 15th. That game occurring on pitch two at 2.10 today. In the meantime, this is the last game on pitch three. So I suggest you tune over to pitch one or two. So watch the remainder of the games and of course the finals at 10 to five, half five this afternoon.